Welcome back to TEDx KTH at Bromma Airport out here in Stockholm. Uh, we've assembled a new panel uh, who are going to entertain you with some, some chit chat for uh, uh, a few more minutes now. Uh, so don't go anywhere. Uh, we are promised a, uh, a surprise in the next session. So uh, short introductions, please, uh, starting here, maybe. Mm -hmm. Jan Linkvist, Director of Corporate Communication at Stockholm Arlanda Airport and also, of course, involved in uh, Stockholm Bromma Airport. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is Terminal 1, right? And Terminal 2, 3, 4 <laughs> and 5 are Arlanda. If well, I actually, this is the first charter hall of uh, uh, Bromma Airport. So mm -hmm. this is a very old building and it's, uh, well, you, we are not allowed to change it very much. <laughs> oh, right. I and see. we really want to because we are expanding <laughs> the airport. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I see. Yeah, my name is uh, Mikael Nybaka. I am the deputy director of, of transport platform at KTH. Mm -hmm. I'm also assistant professor in vehicle dynamics. <laughs> so I'm Christina Lampionerud, uh, founder and innovator of a <laughs> company called Boston Power. Lovely. And I'm David Bismarck, and we've met before. So uh, in this session, we've, uh, we were promised by Donny some nitty gritty. So the big ideas in the yeah. first session and the nitty gritty in this session. Uh, starting out with some changes to light airplanes. Uh, did that conjure up any thoughts <laughs> in your mind? Well, uh, th there is uh, very much uh, development in airplanes uh, overall, both, both the small ones mm. and the big ones. And of course, to get a uh, better uh, um, uh, how can you put it? Uh, better uh, use of airplanes is, of course, to, you have to uh, improve ATM systems, air traffic management. Mm -hmm. uh, every plane in Europe goes around 50 kilometers without any reason, so to speak, because we ha have uh, uh, not so good air traffic management systems, mm -hmm. and it can be done. It's just a political decision to uh, change the. Uh, uh, the, the roads up in the air. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, we have biofuel, of course, and then we have technology with newer engines and so on. And this is important that uh, uh, aviation works with these issues. Aviation stands for 2% of the carbon dioxide in the world. And of course, that is what we must work to get as small as possible. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting thought. We wasn't covering these short talks, but basically there are sustainable technologies today available that can go in mm. and do the hotel load, like we did in our exploring in the trucking industry. Mm. So very similar ideas with the lights and the air conditioning can run, be run by batteries and you can mm. have some solar panels mm. actually on the plane. Mm. Mm. Uh, biodiesel mm. involvement is really exciting mm. actually mm. and yes. proving to be exactly identical energy content. So that's mm. kind of cool actually. Mm. So I think it's happening. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is really interesting because we need the, the communication, of course, but we don't need the carbon dioxide from it. So we right. must, uh, must work in both ends, bo both with the benefit and, uh, and uh, the carbon dioxide. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, so in the next talk, connecting to your talk, Christina, uh, we heard Mats Lexell saying that we should, we can't rely on batteries, mm. uh, so we need to stay connected. Mm. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? I think yeah, it's very cool that we debate all these things, and I think there will, we will see a lot of innovation actually, uh, especially from the software hardware side. So the fact that we now have batteries that have double the energy density and faster charge rate, basically embracing the paradigm of mobility, combined with new systems of software where you can talk to these batteries and basically talk to the consumer. So I am such a huge believer, which I mentioned in my talk, mm -hmm. of information. If you just know, yeah. that you can affect it. If you just have it, then now with a mobility paradigm where you basically have a lot of data in your palm all the time, mm. you'll make different decisions. So I think it's a very interesting time and I think we can make huge progress actually over mm -hmm. the next few years. So my, I, I recently, I managed to not buy a car for a very long time, but I bought one last week actually. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those that sort of, it stops at a red light, so it shuts off. Mm. Uh, so do you do you see a combination between your uh, the the notion the place where you come from and maths? So maybe when you stop at a red light, it's charging from underneath or something like that. Right. So or is that unnecessary? I think it's. Uh, I think we have a choice, right? So I I'm a chemist by training, so I am extremely concerned about climate change, and I think that we have to take technology that's available today and deploy it, and we have to create a huge amount of awareness, actually. Uh, so I think it's wonderful. I mean, I am one of innovators in this room. I think there are quite a few. I think we should continue to invent, but we also need to be very practical and decide to deploy technologies that are available today. There's so much cash and could be so much momentum, but it basically starts here in, in forums like this, where we just decide to embrace mm -hmm. technical solutions that are not perfect, 
but that basically get us a step closer. So I think never before has the urgency been this high. And frankly, it is a little bit of a mass deployment needed, I think, yeah. to basically make shifts happen. And, and you'll, you'll see that you have a, a car that stops. It wasn't that bad. Mm. You know, 15 years ago, people would go, oh, that's acceptable. You know, yeah. it's also OK to have different functionalities. So I think if we continue to embrace the transport problem as I need a new car or mm. I need a new airplane, ah. that's not the right question. Sure. It is, mm. I want to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then we solve a different problem. I yeah. think. So uh, there have been quite a few of interesting experiments, I think, that are taking off big time, like take Zipcar, where you have a pooling of cars, and mm. you are basically one subscriber, and you can track on your mm -hmm. iPhone all the time where it is. All right, right. And you are just a there subscriber. There are actually many of those pools in Stockholm. I, I live too far yeah. out, so I can't use them. But otherwise, it, it's a great idea. It's right. a great idea, and it's fairly simple. And once you try it, yeah. it's actually you're pretty hooked. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so what I hear you saying is that you're, you're actually saying that what we need is a uh, a grand change of a grand scheme to change this, or to introduce some th some change that actually matters, not just one maker of a car right. introducing this start-stop thingy. Yeah, you're actually saying. I think that's too little. Actually, it almost yeah. has no exactly. effect. Exactly. No, basically. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think it's uh, it's a gimmick, right? It's kind of fun, though. So yeah. so the fact that we have multiple ideas right now coming into the market with success. You know, my little company, I've raised almost $400 million and we will actually make a difference. We will produce, you know, a gigawatt hour in annual production in energy. That's a lot. Yeah. And still it's 0.2 market share percent globally. So mm -hmm. it's so little. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it could be done and that we have a chance to dream big mm -hmm. and actually deploy technology. So I think actually it, it calls for a time where innovators have to collaborate with the establishment in business and politicians and actually touch consumers. So uh -huh. social media, the arrival of that is it's really cool uh -huh. and very, very timely. And it's timely. not just a uh, question of the technology in itself, it's also how we use it. Yeah. Uh, like uh -huh. your system, for yeah. instance, with the car means yeah. that we have to think a little different and we saw the other with uh, uh, Jonas Eliasson yeah. that uh, it's also the social behavior together Absolutely. with the technology. And, and the fun <coughs> thing I think in this time is that a lot of people want to do the right thing. The question mm. is, what is that? Mm -hmm. And I think many are frustrated by saying, I know we have climate change, I know we have issues with the economy, I know there are human rights issues, what do I do? Mm. And now it becomes really concrete. You can do a lot of things. You can vote with your money every day and you can make very conscious decisions. Yeah. I think so it is uh, sorry, yes. important to you know, connect, make, make the people want to buy this, this product. Yeah. The automotive uh, manufacturers is, is battling this when they are shifting to electromobility. How should we design the service, the product yeah. around the user? And how can we offer something else? So they are talking about offering also the, the charging stations, mm -hmm. having an inductive plate on your driveway, mm -hmm. yeah. hooking up to the, mm -hmm. to the network, being able to offload the peaks, as mm -hmm. you say, mm -hmm. using the energy grid uh, more smartly with, mm -hmm. the, with the vehicles. Mm -hmm. And another point that was quite interesting was this, this battery bank. I mean, who, who should own the batteries? Uh, so, yeah, so there's one interesting mm -hmm. TED talk is from a couple of years ago. Oh, yes. I don't know, the, the one where you... The better place idea that you yeah. basically change it and you have banks and you charge in the wall. Mm. So that's one idea. And I think we have the, the luxury right now of not being so picky. Let's mm -hmm. deploy, let's try. So mm. sure. in Israel, it's a wonderful idea. It's a fairly dense population. Oh, right, the yeah. economic value is pretty high. So that works. Yeah. Mm. Uh, in the United States, that's going to be pretty hard. So in the United States, they already are accustomed to bigger cars. So the idea of bigger batteries in the car and that you feel safe, but you don't really use it, you can use that very quickly. Here, where the biggest cities have really good infrastructure for yeah. public transport, the car sharing is a very easy, adoptable sure. system. So I think we'll see quite a bit of innovation actually going Excellent. into different mm. geog geographies with different technologies. I think yeah. it's just a it's really brilliant. cool time actually to be yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially participating. As you will need a car uh, now and then for your longer vacation yeah. or right. something like that, yeah. while you normally only uses this maybe yeah. some uh, 50 kilometers or something like that. Yeah. So range extenders, of some kind, or a uh, Wankel engine with a or generator or Or just rent a car like for that. that weekend. Yes, yes, exactly. You and if you have it. a carpool, then you use the, the, right. the, upgrade the, the, the normal yeah. car or yes. the uh, vacation car. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. exactly. So I, I'd like to uh, use a personal uh, um, reflection to tie, in, tie together some of the uh, things that we've heard. So you're saying that we need 
to some extent there is going to be lots and lots of, of uh, innovation going on mm. but to some extent we also need grand uh, grand yeah. investment as a society into mm. these ideas uh, but so take Stockholm for example we uh, each winter the trains break down for mm. some reason and and as like what uh, Johanna Leeson said earlier about the cost of actually b being yeah. in dige uh, digestion, <laughs> <laughs> congestion, yeah. uh, it can also be calculated for the for the people who stand waiting right. for trains that don't right. arrive or right. have to cram into buses, right? And we've seen for year after year after year the politicians aren't doing; they are not spending the money to 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 buy that time back for the people. Mm. So how would you convince them? Does anyone have any ideas about how you would convince them to do this? But this is an economical this? problem with the trains, really. Uh, we often get the question, how come uh, that aviation works in the winter time? Well, mm. if aviation doesn't work, we don't get any money. Yes. Right. So we have to have it work. Exactly. While we have a system where we, for many, many years, had 90% uh, uh, money to the trains, even if they didn't work. Yeah. And, and of course, we should pay by from our tax money for the train, because it's so important for Sweden to have a very good train system. Mm. I'm not questioning that. But you should have more of... A, uh, uh, incentive for really having it in operation. Mm. Actually, this brings up a really interesting point. So it's a dilemma of our time, right? So we are not pricing energy or water correctly in today's society. Yeah. So if we would basically put true cost into these systems, not only would you have the revenue to keep these up, but you would also have the incentives to basically keep those economic systems. I think it's very true that the financial systems and the way we're engineering our societies today is also going to be revamped. I think when we grow old, we'll see a very different society than what we are growing up in. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll see more transparency in public service and we'll see more pricing. So I think we have subsidized, I mean, it's, it's pretty true, right? So the use and the introduction of oil helped our economies enormously during the 50s, 60s, 70s when we had enormous growth and today it's one of our biggest problems. Yeah. And we will get out of it. I yeah. am really certain. There's so many technologies, there's so many opportunities and, and energy and water, but energy pr predominantly will dictate how we do those things. So basically, the idea of trains is an interesting infrastructure, a project I don't think will ever be deployed again. Actually, it's very interesting. Oh, so you thought? So you think that if if the tr if we didn't have trains and they came along now, you didn't think we would invest in them? I don't think so. It All was right. basically a huge decision between the automotive industry and the governments at the time, and, mm -hmm. and part of the U.S. not having as much trains was the same decision, but a different, basically, outcome of that discussion. I see. And you'll see in China there are trains, fast speed trains, going between metropolitan areas. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And maybe not so to the smaller cities. So I think we'll see right. enormous amounts of innovation. You'll see smaller transport vehicles for one or two people. Uh, you'll see more of a bus kind of service. You see airplanes that are, do shorter hops. There, there's so much happening, right? I mean, it's just really exciting. And new <laughs> sustainable ways, new materials that are coming in. That's just... Um, yeah, Pretty the, amazing, actually. The, you see it every day. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the solution is not, uh, you know, one-fold. It's, it's yeah. We need to improve in every single area if yeah. we're going to reach the targets that, that we have in front of us yeah. to, to, to reach the CO2 emissions yeah. that we need to uh, reach at. We, we have a serious problem, and there's a lot of different challenges that we mm -hmm. need to confront, and we need to work in every area. So multimodal transport is also an, an issue that we really need to work harder with connecting airports, mm. connecting seaports, connecting railway system, mm -hmm. connecting that to public transport in urban areas. And the electronic means. I mean, using exactly. cave technology and gaming exactly. technology for meeting uh, yes. technology instead. I remember <laughs> yes. like being mm -hmm. in, in Tokyo in the mid-90s, being just stunned that people were running with their thin laptops, just checking when the Shinkansen would, the big fast train, and say, oh, it's running in two minutes. Well, that's lovely. I can buy a cup of tea. <laughs> and use that data, mm -hmm. you know, in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And we still don't have mm -hmm. that here. Mm -hmm. So it's coming, I think. <laughs> and I guess we've come up to uh, teleportation. Uh, yeah. Did it, that tickle anyone's... 
Uh, not mind not for myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can say that I've, I've been thinking about this since I was a young teenager, and it's always scared me because I, just like he said, is that my first concern is it will my soul teleport? Yeah. And I thought the answer was no, but hey. he claims yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please continue. I just. Um, Hi, Donny. So I think that the the one of the things that we said was that there is going to be lots and lots of of uh, uh, innovation in the green tech area, mm. uh, but some of us also feel that there there needs to be some huge uh, cha game changing mm. investment by society as a mm. whole. So some we, some, of, some of you, some of us. <laughs> so I think it's happening. Whether governments will do it actually or not, because I think there's so many. So it's chaotic right now. The world economy is chaotic. Mm. Energy, yeah. water problem, human rights issues are chaotic. Uh, increase of population on the earth is chaotic. So most entrepreneurs see that as an opportunity. It's yeah. ill-defined, and it's a wonderful time to actually think outside the box and frankly be rewarded for it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, wor time. the world is disruptive in itself. Yeah. So when, whenever, when, when a better time to be, be an entrepreneur? Yeah. And, and, and there's cash mm -hmm. available if you have big ideas. And I think that's actually a very big difference from five years ago, yeah. where now if you have a big idea that can make a huge impact, there are plenty of funding for it, which is a really big difference. Yeah, so in the, in the first session we heard this, th th there's this balance between love and utility. Mm. Uh, and in the first panel we were talking about how do you make an, uh, an ele electric car popular. Mm. And we all we've tried so far is to, to make the utility more expensive. But someone was saying we need to market the hell out of this and make people love it. Or make a product that people but can it's love. It's very easy. I mean, we tried uh, 100 cars, even in Sweden. We have thousands of cars in China trying. And it's very much about setting expectation. If yeah. I tell you, you're going to run a car, it's exactly what you have today, you blow the opportunity. If I say, ah. I'm going to invite you to be part of the new future, it's going to be quiet, there are a few things we don't know, let us know what you think, be part of this innovation and just have more open source for the knowledge. I, I think it's going to go really fast and I think we're blowing through the old-fashioned way where the auto manufacturers are basically setting here all the specs to having a more collaborative, I mean, partnerships with battery providers, electronics providers, new carbon fiber technology, much lighter, that is yeah. basically taking down the total weight. It's just a new paradigm, and I think what was not possible 15 years ago, where everybody was very set in their ways, we just blew that up Definitely. with the world economy. So the Perfect. same rules don't apply. Yeah. And with that, we'll have to wrap <laughs> up. Thank you, everybody out there who's been watching. Uh, give us another couple of minutes, and we'll be online again with the entertainment. And thank you so very much for being in the panel. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great.